Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. Unless you turn on that light to discover one of these critters in your room. It's time to go jolly old England and ep ep ep. Let's take a look at the most dangerous beasts the Harry Potter universe has to offer, and no, we aren't allowed to count JK Rowling's Twitter. Alas. Let's start where Harry, Ron, and Hermione did. Trolls. The troll in the bathroom is the first big challenge the trio faces year one at Hogwarts. The troll, of course, was placed there by Professor Quirrell to guard the Philosopher's Stone. With an average height of 12 feet, super strength even for that great big size, and an interest in human flesh, it doesn't make us feel any better that they consistently roll a 1 on intelligence. Cool. Mind if I… slither in? Let's talk basilisks, the king of snakes. Typically bred by dark wizards by placing a cursed chicken egg under a toad. <laughs> Good news is the Department of Control of Magical Creatures can easily determine if a wizard is guilty of basilisk breeding and put an end to it. The bad news is, it is that easy to breed a basilisk. As we know from Chamber of Secrets, locking eyes with a basilisk is an immediate fatality, and even a cornered or mirrored glance will render you petrified. Even ghosts will enter a state of petrification from eye contact with the slithering menace. Their bite, of course, is venomous, assuming they don't just swallow you whole, and in fact, their fangs were instrumental in destroying horcruxes. And the basilisk's armored skin can deflect spells, and it's not uncommon for a basilisk to reach 50 feet in length. On that note, I'm a slither out. How did our boy Harry survive the aforementioned basilisk's bite? Dumbledore's feathered friend, Fox the Phoenix. Phoenix tears are the only known antidote to basilisk venom, but these birds aren't simply noble helpers. They're not fighters by nature, but their talons and beak carry heat, just like their feathers, and many a horror movie has already been made out of bird attacks from room temperature talons. Now add literal fire. There's much we don't know about how exactly a phoenix uses its powers, but it's possible they can control the temperature of their feathers and become larger or strengthen themselves with fire. Well, Grindelwald could manipulate them with fire anyway. Hot girl summer, Fox, let's go! Let us remain in the magical aviary a bit longer. The Thunderbird is a cousin of the phoenix, but much larger on average. Thunderbirds are capable of creating storms, and they can do it while flying. They're highly sensitive creatures who will create storms in response to any sense of danger. In Fantastic Beasts, the Thunderbird is an immense help to Newt Scamander, releasing a rainstorm laced with swooping evil venom that gently obliviates the whole of New York. But I'd rather not risk being on the end of an unfriendly lightning storm myself, and I wish those big birds the very best. Speaking of the swooping evil, what happens if that venom isn't diluted by the reins of an acquiescent bird and a nice man named Newt isn't calling the shots? Nothing good. Here's a new word for you, encephalophagy. Means they feed on brains and that venom secretion is helpful in the process. There's something beautiful about these nearly neon, butterfly-winged, wolf-faced critters and their fluttering wingspan, but the brain-eating is a huge deal-breaker. If it sets its sights on you, good luck dealing with its spiked wings and spell-deflecting skin. Maybe better to just let the venom seep in and imagine yourself on a pleasant beach. You know, while it slurps slurps your noggin. Do you know that there are creatures who actually refused the classification of beings to remain classified as beast? I figure they deserve a special spot on our list. Mer people, including the Selkies of Scotland and the Sirens of Ancient Greece, didn't want to be classified alongside dark creatures like hags and vampires, and so they chose to remain beasts. You'll remember them from one of the challenges in the Goblet of Fire. A group of greenish-gray skinned mer people, taller than most humans, resides in the Black Lake at Hogwarts. Well, let's hope we don't hear their seductive singing outside of those circumstances. Centaurs are naturally gifted in divination, more than once in the books predicting the future, and are naturalist healers. Like mer people, they didn't want to be associated with dark creatures, but part of their hesitance in the beings classification comes from their mistrust of wizard society and urge to remain connected to nature and natural magics. Firenze was even nearly killed by other centaurs for his service to Hogwarts, and was greatly criticized for even allowing an injured Harry to ride on his back. Thinking of the treatment of house elves and how the wizarding world a la Voldemort dehumanized even their fellow witches and wizards, who can blame them? And uh, I think that we can all agree that they gave Umbridge less than she deserved. 
Just like human beings, merpeople and centaurs have a variety of appearances, with changes in hair color, skin color, and even height differing depending on their region of origin. And neither part is actually half human, half beast. They're both their own species, and they're both more than capable of taking a wizard down. Now, dragons are a staple of the fantasy genre, and Harry Potter is no different. Dragon Heartstrings is one of the most prevalent wand cores, and of course, dragons are a crucial part of the Triwizard Tournament in Goblet of Fire. One of the most dangerous professions in the wizarding world is that of a dragonologist or a dragon keeper. Yes, like Charlie Weasley in the books. And heartbroken we didn't get the coolest Weasley on screen. These bad boys are one of the most aggressive creatures in Harry Potter lore and breathe fire in the traditional dragony way, but throughout history they've been known to fly off with people or even entire ships and once attacked a muggle beach on foot. While I respect Goblet of Fire director Mike Newell's good time creative choices, I ain't looking to joyride on one of these things. Thestrals are eerie as they are beautiful, horse-like beasts with a skeletal frame and big leathery wings. For ages, the Thestral was considered to be a dangerous creature, and it can be, but ultimately, it made the list for the danger it represents. Thestrals can only be seen by those who have witnessed death. These creatures are introduced to us in Order of the Phoenix because it is the first time Harry sees one, having witnessed the death of Cedric Diggory. He finds a friend in Luna Lovegood who saw her mother die from an experiment gone wrong at a young age. Thestrals make a formidable warhorse, and taking flight gives them additional advantage. Like horses here in our reality, however, Thestrals can be devoted and loyal companions when treated well and respected. They were a crucial part of the Battle of the Seven Potters, and hey, if you get traumatized, you absolutely deserve a goth pegasus. You know how the swooping evil feeds on brains, and that's a bummer? <laughs> that is elementary, baby. Dementors are literal soul suckers. These foggy, hovering wraiths bring literal darkness everywhere they go, and don't you worry, they're bringing some metaphorical darkness too. Before a Dementor ever begins feeding on your soul, literally sucking it out of you, they devour any feelings of happiness and joy they find, making you feel immense depression, and in the case of someone like Harry who had past trauma, they can make you relive your worst moments. Despite being a toddler when his parents were killed, Harry can hear his mother's final scream. The Dementor's only real role in wizard society is to guard Azkaban, the wizard prison for the most lethal, cruel, and unforgivable criminals among them. Although a noseless, fascist regime did give them considerably more tasks outside of prison because all Voldy's other choices weren't evil enough, I guess. And now, it's time for what Newt Scamander called arguably the most dangerous in the world, the Nundu. Hailing from East Africa, the Nundu resembles any number of big cats in the region, namely leopards or lions. But beyond the usual stalking instincts you can catch on Animal Planet, the Nundu moves with complete and total silence. Subduing them has historically taken the magic of 100 or more witches and wizards working all at once. And their similarities with lions aside, their breath alone is toxic, filled with disease that can wipe out entire towns. And so naturally, Newt's commander thought, that's friend-shaped, and plopped it into his magical suitcase. Can't you just go skydiving or something, man? I don't know about you, but I'm feeling significantly less bummed that I never got that Hogwarts acceptance letter. You ever get moths in your dorm? Yeah, that was enough for me. Imagine going to magical middle and high school, and there are special creatures that prey on your fears, worst memories, and insecurities. Are the other teenagers not enough for you, magic god?